think you've had long enough to handle your life, one was supposed. Um, I gave you your quiz last Friday to keep. Why is that? When do you have a test? Tomorrow. And that way you can study. So uh, you have out your study guide. Get out your study guide. I passed it out to you on Friday. I seriously had someone first period who said, Miss Compton, I only have the first half. And I'm like, yes, baby. Only the first half was copied on the packet. That's why we got a whole new copy on Friday. I don't know what they were doing on Friday. They did not be good on Friday. So if you are in the same boat, because it happens. We all have our moments. It's going to be in the 922, because that's what Friday's date was. So look in the basket on 22. Okay, so our test is tomorrow. So we're going to look over this study out really fast. We're going to go over these math workshops, and then I'm just going to let you work. When do I do unless you're bring it? Do I post the key to the study guide? Yes. I'm gonna post the key to that study guide either first thing this afternoon or at least by tonight at the latest, before supper. Tonight supper early. So. How early? <laughs> do you eat supper like my grandparents early or just like There was one day last week I got supper on the way home and we ate it when I got home. Not gonna lie to you. So that was around 4.30. So is that grandparents early? That's pretty early. Sometimes, normally we aim, I try to hold out until 6. But lately I've been really hungry, so there might be like a pre-supper and a post-supper. I got <laughs> I can't, I mean, it's just when you're hungry, you're hungry. I don't know, maybe I'm not eating enough lunch. I don't know. Well, that's another, disc. I don't know. Um, super hungry lately. Um, there was more words before I got about thinking about food. Test is smart. Oh, you had some homework over the weekend that you forgot about. Um, but in fact, you actually had it done before you left on Friday, my hopes. It was 32 through 34. Nick has his done. Well, he's missing one. But he'll finish it. He has his done. When I get done rambling, it would be smart to come show me that homework assignment. It would be smart. When I get done rambling, it would be smart to show me that homework assignment. Um... I think that's all. That's all the words that want to come out. So your homework from last week, test is tomorrow. We're going to talk about the bell ringer and the I mean, math workshop, not bell ringer, math workshop and the study guide now. Okay, and we're going to do something fun. Let's see, you leave me at 58. At 9.50, we're going to call it a day. Okay, um, number one is going to be along the lines of what we've been doing lately. Is there a GCF? My first thought on any problem is, is there a GCF? Yes. There is a bigger number than eight. 16. 16, and his group gets point. You can factor out a 16, and then there's another point available. Now, what else can be factored out and tell me the remaining? Okay, and what's remaining? And then what? Negative three. And then what? Okay, so Nick and Daniel both get a point for that. Okay, so what's going on this week is life is changing. Life is changing. We're starting to actually factor factor, not just GCF. So, and we're going to go to number five next. If, and I'm going to write this little note to myself about number of terms. Because lately all our problems that hadn't mattered, it's been GCF, GCF, GCF. And finally this week we're going to start thinking beyond GCF. So if there are two terms in your problem, one, two. Yes, I ask myself about GCF. And then I'm probably done. If there are three terms, four, t four or more, terms, we do things differently. I seriously, no matter what, ask myself GCF first. Is there a GCF? Is there a GCF? But then with three or four, we could potentially do a little more than what we've been doing. Okay, so let's go to number five before I finish filling in my little hints up here. Number five, there are only two terms, so GCF is the best thing we can do. What can I factor out on number five? 6 a b says, and what would you be left with? A, or four a. Okay, and we'll give Daniel and Nick another point. My gosh. Okay, 
So those are our only problems with two terms. Number three has one, two, three. Number four, one, two, three, four. Six, one, two, three, four. So we've got to come up with a new plan. If you have three terms, that's when you might want to actually for real factor. Yeah, I'm going to put the words for real. You might want a for real factor. Like, and we'll get to how, we'll remind ourselves how to real, for real factor later. It's coming. If there are more than three terms, so four or more, we have to use a technique called after GCF. Is there a GCF that comes out of everybody? For instance, on number two, I was thinking maybe an A, but that last term, mm, no A, so there is no GCF. Okay, after you think GCF, we use a technique called grouping. Grouping. Okay, with grouping, we put each pair in parentheses, so we break it up, like you're a set and you're a set. And we're going to see if we can pull out a GCF from either of these pairs, these binomial pairs. Okay, with that first pair, a squared minus 4ac, what can we factor out? And what would we be left with? A minus 4c. Okay, and then with that second pair, what can we factor out? And what would we be left with? Okay, so let's say all the words again. We broke it up into two different groups. We asked ourselves, is there anything we can factor out of this first group, A minus 4AC? We noticed the A, so we factored out an A. We were left with A minus 4C. With the second group, we noticed they both had a B. We factored out a B. We were left with A minus 4C. What's really interesting about this? Nick, get another point. A minus 4C happens but twice. We've got the same thing in both parentheses, don't we? Now, that is not a miracle. That is actually an, an intentional thing. That's how grouping works, or how grouping is supposed to work if you've done it correctly. So our answer ends up being a binomial, so like two different things. We'll have A minus 4C in one of our parentheses, and we'll put the leftovers in the other parentheses. So what would I put in the, in the other parentheses? A plus B. A, B were the people on the outside, that's why I put A plus B. A minus 4C happened in both parentheses, that's why it gets B in its own thing. If from here we wanted to check ourselves, because you're questioning your sanity, because it happens to the best of us, how could you check yourself with this problem? You could distribute, and you can have a point for that, but there's a fancy term for when we distribute with two binomials. There's a term for that. We're going to FOIL, have another point. So we could actually FOIL it out and see if we ended up back at our original. I bet we would. A squared minus 4AC plus AB minus 4BC. Yes, we would. So you can check with FOIL. Or check your FOIL, apparently. OK, are there any questions about the math workshop today? We're going to do 3, 4, and 6 on Wednesday. 3, 4, and 6 on Wednesday. And then you could already be smart and do 7 through 12 for Thursday because you like those. Okay, looking at your study guide, which I assume is blank like Nick's, which is fine because you have all class period today. Is this a grade? When is it supposed to be turned in? Okay, as long as we're on the same page. Okay, in case you need to because someone last period was confused, a, B, and C with number 1, A, B, and C with number 2, A, B, and C with number 3. So they were all named F. That's why all the functions were named F. That's why I was confused. So these three go with this function. These three go with this function. These three go with this function. I think you would have figured that out, but just in case. Okay, so the whole first nine questions are piecewise. The whole front page of the study guide is piecewise. What does that imply? <laughs> Yeah, you're not going to like it, and that piecewise is a major chunk of the test. Okay, uh, how people mess up piecewise. What? Well, first of all, they don't plug it in the right piece. I hope you've got that down. If not, today is the day you want to ask me about one, two, or three. You're out of time. You need to ask me if you're, or ask someone in your group if you're confused on those. I think most people have that down. If you're going to make a mistake, most people make them on the graphing ones. The most common mistake is actually to not follow the directions. What do most people leave off that they're not supposed to leave off? 
domain and range. You have got to put the domain and range. If you see D and R question mark on your paper, that means you left off domain and range. What is a really, and you can have a point for that, what's a really good guess for domain? And you can have a point for that, ma'am. Negative infinity, infinity is a great guess, especially for domain. With piecewise, it's not always the great guess for range, but if you don't understand, put it. It's better than leaving it blank. But like 95, 90, I'll even go like 98% of the time, that's the right domain for us. Might not be the right range, but it's the right domain. Okay, then when I'm looking at Angel's graphs and I grade her graphs, I consider three different things in my head. Lo and behold, it's the same three things we discussed over and over again. My first thought is, did she draw her fences? If she doesn't draw her fence, oh, for instance, number six, at negative three and positive three, I think she doesn't know what she's doing. Did she draw her fences at the right spot? Or spots? My second thought is about her graphs. Is her intercept in the right spot? For instance, on six, number th uh, six, the third thing is three. So it's a straight line at three. If her line is not a straight line at three, she didn't understand that. Or for instance, on number five, if her intercept's not at negative three, she didn't go up two to the left one. And did she graph correctly? I'm looking to see how did she graph? Did she graph correctly? And then my third thought is, of course, what we discussed every time we graph piecewise. It's about those fence points. Did she fill in a circle that should have been open? Did she have an open circle that should have been filled in? I look at those fence points. So again, I count off the most and people don't even put their fences because then I'm like, they have no idea what they're doing. They don't even put the fences. They aren't even on the same planet as me. But as long as you put your fences, you attempt to graph. I really thought it was mine for a second, but it's not. And then you don't put your fence points and I get confused. Okay, so you're sad because the first half of the test is this. You're sad that this is a large chunk of the test. I get it. Flip to the back to feel better, better about yourself. Better about yourself. Okay. Um, we get to the back, and Nick is super happy because he can handle these. So literally, he's just worried about piecewise, I assume. He knows how to, let's look at 16 through 21. He knows how to graph this inequality. He knows greater than means shade above. He knows since it's not an equal to sign, he's going to do a dotted line instead of a solid line. He can handle these. He's only mad at, for instance, number 18, and that's only because he's lazy, and he doesn't want to have to rearrange it to y equals mx plus b. There is one mistake, literally one mistake, that Nick could make, that Nick might make. Otherwise, I think he's going to rock graphing inequalities. What's the one mistake Nick might make? Yeah, and so Nick's not going to make that. You're supposed to flip the sign when you divide by a negative. So, for instance, when he rearranges his equation on 18, when he divides both sides by negative 5, if he doesn't change that greater or equal to to less than or equal to, he's going to shade the wrong region. So you've got to flip when you divide by a negative. You also have to zoom in. That would help. Otherwise, I really think Nick has the inequalities down, and I think most of you do too because everyone had to pass that checkpoint, and everyone passed it pretty quickly. I think everyone did. I don't know. I'd have to look. Okay, and then Nick is excited about 10 through 15 because every single one of them, the parent function, it looks like abs val. It could be absolute value. It could be a linear, or it could be a constant. But he doesn't even care what it is. Why does Nick not care? What does he get to use? He's got that calculator, and that calculator can help him. So on number 11, guess Paige is smart enough to realize the minus 2 means left 2, the plus 3 means up 3, so she takes it and moves it minus 2 up 3 and puts her first point. Great. I'm not going to know if she doesn't know how to do that. If she's graphing in her calculator, excuse me, she could graph it y equals x minus 2 plus 3. Now, she's got to graph it correctly. It's not the calculator's fault if she doesn't put the plus 3 outside the bars. That's the, not her, not the calculator's fault. She can graph it with the calculator, and she can, oh, I should have gone to the right 2 and up 3, whatever. Okay, so she can check with her calculator, 
And then there's a way she can look and get the exact points she needs to plot on her paper. How could she get those exact points? Second graph to get to that table would work. And then she'd have the literal points. You can get a point for that. Or when you're on your graph, if you press trace, it might not give you exact values, but you could ask it, for instance, at 2, what is my value? Oh, it's 3. At 3, what's my value? Oh, it's 4. So you can either use trace or your table to get your actual set of values. Tomorrow, if your calculator does something crazy, and I mean truly crazy, I will help you. But otherwise, there is no help for the weary come tomorrow with the calculator. So let me remind you to get to that absolute value button. You press math. You scroll over to NUN, and abs value is the first one down. Don't ask me tomorrow how to graph absolute value in the calculator. I'm not going to help you with that. But if your calculator does something crazy, then I will look at that. Okay, let's say you graph something and it's not shown good on the screen and you want to change the zoom. If I press zoom, which one did I say was the best zoom to press after that? Zoom and then what? In, out, decimal, square, standard, trig, standard. If you zoom standard, life gets better. It'll zoom in specifically to your graph. Okay, are there any questions about the graphing calculator? Maybe you'll think of one today as you type them in. For instance, maybe you forgot how to do a fraction like on number 14. Okay, I don't think you have it. Does anyone have any questions about the study guide? I think you just need time to work on it, but I've been wrong before. If you come up with a question, come see me. If you've got your homework done, come show it to me. Okay, oh, we're going to stop at 9.50. Because we got something fun to do.